Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian Night series, and we are going to be entering a siege to begin this episode, and, uh, well, you may or may not know this particular siege, mainly because this is Nevyansk Castle, which is, uh, technically my fief that I gained in the previous episode. But, of course, um, Mr., you know... Mr. Fellow, the uh, the leader of the uh, Sturgeons, decided to besiege it with a massive army of 480 or so people. And as a result, I, uh, well, I, I couldn't defend it. There was no way I could defend this. And um, as a result, it got taken because I was actually relatively far away at the time. And I made my way back here thinking that I might be able to defend it somehow. But, um, you know, maybe with some assistance with some of the other, um, some of the other vassals or something like that. But, uh, no such luck, unfortunately. It seems like there was just, um, there's just way too many people. Um, I can actually get these ladders up, as you can quite clearly tell. So I could, um, I could raise these myself. I don't know whether I'm going to get shot, though. Oh, hello. Oh, no. Oh, that was close. Did you see that? Yeah. That's not what we want, thank you very much. That was uh, that was a bit too close for comfort for my liking. All right, so thankfully, <laughs> I did not get squashed by the stones this time around because if you recall in a previous series of ours, I uh, did go up to um, a particular, a pretty large gate and uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and, you know, get this gate down. And, uh, well, it didn't go too well. Let's just say that. It didn't go too well because I got flattened by a rock. So that definitely helped. Anyway, I'm hopeful that maybe the battering ram will give us an additional entry point as well. Um, siege ladders are a little bit of a mixed bag, in my opinion. Because, on the one hand, I think that they're actually really cool. Being able to give a, another option to the attacking force to be able to get inside. I think that's a very cool little option to have. However, the problem with it is that they generally do form their very own natural bottleneck and it makes things, well, let's just say a bit of a kill box for the defense to focus on. So it is a bit, as I say, a bit of a mixed bag really. Um, there are some mods actually that I was, um, that I was looking at uh, previously, nothing really um, that I was seriously considering going for because I like to have most of the options available in sieges and things like that. But apparently, there are mods to actually make it possible to disable the siege towers themselves because apparently a lot of people have said that the siege towers, or not, not the siege towers, the, the ladders. And that's what I'm talking about. The ladders are a bit too. Uh, shall we say, they make you too much into a victim of the defense's attacks. Basically, that's how it is. They're, they're a bit too devastating to deal with. And so there are mods that can remove them. Of course, I'm not doing that because I think that, in general, having more options is always a good idea. But, of course, if you want to, then the, then the option is there, you know? That's the really cool thing about sandbox games like Mountain Blade, like all kinds of other open world, sci-fi, medieval, whatever you want to, you know, whatever your your taste is, uh, you're going to have a, a grand old time with any kind of sandbox game, in my opinion. Oh, look at this. They actually opened up the... Oh, wait a minute. They opened up the door? Uh, oh. And then they closed it. Well. Oh, now they're opening it again. Okay. Let me get inside, quickly. Okay. Whew. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. Okay, let's do some damage. Let's try and get my one-handed weapon proficiency up just a little bit. Because even if I just do um, a little bit of damage here and there, I don't need to get kills to raise my skills. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, wonderful. All right. So let me see if I can just poke him. I will poke him with my large stick. There we go. Get him. Oh, he's going on. Why is he going on that? I have no idea why he went on that. That is actually kind of hilarious. I don't know why he ran up there. AI? Thinking it's a bit, um, <laughs> thinking it's a bit, uh, a bit of a different time in the siege by the looks of things. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do this thing. No, that doesn't seem like the best idea, does it? Anyway, I did join an army for this, as you can no doubt tell, because there's no way I would have this amount of units available to me. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this anyway, and uh, we've got, we've gained some loot and all that stuff. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to stay in this army. And um, well, sh should I? No, you know what? I'm not going to stay in this army. Um, because Neviank's castle is actually no longer mine. Oh, the Sturgeons have now made peace. I feel like that's kind of... I feel like that's kind of harsh. Okay, you can vote for the owner of it. Do we want to vote for the... Uh, do I want to get it again? I'm going to actually abstain and see what happens. They actually gave it to me again. Okay, well, I suppose that's absolutely fine. But as I did in the previous episode, I think I may have spent a little bit too much money on, well random horses so i'm gonna have to go into another tournament here and uh i i think someone actually did mention that they like seeing the tournaments so i'm pretty happy with that because that means i'm gonna be able to uh well hopefully oh, i don't even have any money to be able to bet oh terrible come on no no no, no. Oh, oh dear Ooh, nice Whew. okay i was a bit worried about that for a second Okay, Boar Veteran. We might have a bit of a problem with this guy. Ah, oh, nice. I tried to outrange him, you know. Tried to outrange him, and I know that the overhead is a little bit cumbersome to use. So I tried to use that to my advantage. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to bet on myself any further here. So I'm literally just going to be getting 500 or so gold, which is really not very good, to be honest. So I'm going to have to do something else about that. Maybe um, someone actually did mention as well that uh, the mule trading is um, pretty lucrative. So I might think about doing something about that if I can. Obviously, if I have any money at all to actually invest in trading, then of course, that's definitely going to be something that I will think about. But um, at the moment, I might not even have the opportunity to do so. There we go. Not too bad. All right. That is okay. We're gaining some two-handed skill. We're gaining some athletic skill. That's always good. Is Thorgood going to win this? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. That that actually is pretty bad. Get him. Get him. There we go. Ooh, attack from all the different directions. He can't. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how to block, just like me. I do not know how to block. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we gained 1,000, actually. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. I'm still unsure why I am spending so much money on uh, wages and stuff like that. I, I don't really know why that is, but uh, I guess we'll find out in due time. All right, so let's just smelt all of this. Boom, boom, boom. There we are. Wonderful. And now we can technically sell all that stuff as well so we can gain some more cash that way. And um, yeah, it was actually brought to my attention in the comments as well that I should not have sold my iron to the village because the villages generally tend to give less uh, less prices, uh, lower prices, shall we say. Um, and that's actually true, very true. I uh, completely forgot about that, actually, because obviously I have made a trading character, so it's kind of obvious that that would be the case. But thankfully, we are getting a little bit of extra cash here. I could sell this at Ox Hall, actually. Someone someone mentioned that Ox Hall is a really good place to go to sell your iron and stuff like that, but I'm actually pretty far away from it at the moment. So don't think I'm going to be able to do anything about it at the moment. So I'm just going to equip this and then we'll just sell the rest and there we go we've got now 1900 extra and look at this my main party wages are exuberant actually very exuberant and my castle as well is actually not doing very well here so i think what i might try to do wow look at that 800 gold yeah this is not going to work i'm going to need to do something about this relatively quickly here so i'm going to need to not recruit so we're not going to be recruiting any further for my castle here it makes no sense it makes no sense whatsoever also training we are going to be stopping training as well we're not going to be doing that any further either let's manage the castle a little bit as you can see there are actually still some funds in the reserve here which is actually quite nice and uh, i would like to be getting all of these done as soon as possible but obviously that's uh, that's not it's neither here nor there i can't really control that myself but what i would like to do is go into the garrison let's actually just see what we're all about here okay so um yeah i i'm in a bit of a, a sticky situation here because i i don't have a lot of money and uh these guys are all draining my funds like no one's business they really are so i'm thinking that what i will try to do um let me see here 
I wonder whether you put them in the garrison. They're, they're gonna they're gonna be less, aren't they? They're gonna be um, they're gonna be draining us less, I think, if we put them into the garrison. So let's put some sharpshooters in there as well. I'm just gonna run around with a slightly smaller army for the moment. And has that helped us a little bit? Yeah, it has. But the party wages of the castle have obviously skyrocketed quite a bit. I think what I'm going to have to do is I have to take these out and I will just have to disband them or something along those lines. It's not something that I want to do, obviously, but it is something that I think I have to do for the, uh, the good of my coin purse, because otherwise I am literally just going to end up dying. So 552, that's per day. Do bear that in mind. That is per day. So I might not even be able to do that, to be honest. But thankfully, we're only at war against um <sighs> yeah we're only at war against the northern empire so it could be okay i uh, it's a little bit uh, a little bit sketchy here and there. i'm going to take the vlandian champion out actually because i think it might be good to utilize it a little bit and then we're going to have to get rid of something else uh, not the sharpshooters maybe the boar champions or something like that boar champions i mean here's the thing Boar champions, they're decent, but they're not great, as you can quite clearly tell. The wages are only eight gold, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, the looters, they can go. Peasants, they can go. Uh, we'll keep these guys. Uh, the Vlandian recruits, they can go as well. And how much do we have now? Still 514. Yeah, it's all thanks to the uh, amazing amounts of sharpshooters we have, I assume. So that's going to be... A bit problematic. The saplings can go as well. Even though saplings are actually good units. I'm just going to let them go. Just for uh, reducing my wages. Ooh, it's bad. It is bad. Alright, I'm going to have to try and find either another tournament. Or, yeah, uh, how about this tournament over here. Now, what I'm going to do is... Um, I actually wanted in this episode to go around and raid some of the Northern Empire's villages and try to persuade some of them to join us and so on and so forth. You know, the, the usual kind of thing that I like to do uh, to try and give our faction a little bit of a boost. But, as it stands, what I am going to have to do first is take care of my economy. And uh, that means doing some tournaments, investing in some businesses as well, and uh, then seeing what else is going to happen with it. So hopefully I'll be able to do quite well with my pole arm here, because let's face it, I am not particularly good with spears, as I have said multiple times. I'm really bad with them. And I, I actually used to be pretty good with Byron, but it's been a while since I've actually done a tournament with him. Okay, yeah, nice one, sir. Very good. Who are you? Blandian champion. Oh, very nice indeed, yes. You did a good job. Very nice. Very nicely done. Okay, so let's have a look here. Ah, oh, yes, that's much better. Okay, even though I don't have very high two-handed weapon proficiency, this is going to be much nicer to, to do. There we go. Ah, oh, no. There we are. Okay, that's fine. Keep attacking him. Keep attacking him. A lot of damage. A lot of damage. There we are. Nice. Okay, don't get hit. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. That's all we need to do. Okay. Yeah, use, use the other guy. Use the other guy as, as cover. Oh, that's some damage. Oh, that is some damage. Okay, that's bad. That is really, really bad. That is a Batanian Oath Sworn right there. I think we're going to lose. Unless Thorgood can, can pull this out. Is he going to pull off a victory? He's not even firing. Wait a minute. Thorgood's not even on our side. Never mind. All right, so we've entered another tournament. I might... Oh. I didn't block that, right. Okay, that's not too good, is it? Especially not considering this guy is actually meaning quite a bit of business. Yes, a Batanian Fion was very damaging right there. And we took out the Mercenary Guard as well. I actually had an extremely close first round too. And uh, basically just got through by the skin of my teeth. And I think the main problem are these Batanian Falksmen and Batanian Heroes and the Fian Champions as well. Because there was actually a Fian Champion in the first round, as you can see right there. And he gave me huge problems, absolutely huge problems. As you can see, I've actually found another armored bear skin, which I would very much like to acquire because that thing seems to be really, really protective. And I'm hopeful that we all be able to utilize it nicely. So let's see if I can maybe do some damage here. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, coming in from the side. Bruce with the side swipe. Very nice indeed. All right, so there you go. We're actually up against a mercenary guard. This should be super easy. I feel like Batanian uh, tournaments are actually kind of harsh because they spawn usually your opponent right to the left of you. It seems like that seems to be the case. And very, well, shall we say, dicey. It's very in your face almost immediately. And uh, that's quite problematic, uh, in my opinion. It, it's very, very harsh. Anyway, um, yeah, we did actually do it. Very nice indeed. And we now have an armored bearskin, which is... Um, is it much better than what I'm wearing? Actually, not much better. Well, it's all right, I guess. Seems to be fine. And uh, yeah, I guess what I'm going to do now is I will go on to Pen Canock as well, and we will participate in another tournament so that we can get even more cash. We are going to need that. Oh, wait, what's going on with that? Did you see that guy over there? Weird. Yeah, that guy right there was um, aggressive to us, even though he was from the Batanians. Maybe uh, his minor faction has a problem with uh, with us or something. Anyway, uh, let's just level these guys up. Let's just get the prisoners as well. And how much do I have? 553. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something about this. Really, I am going to have to do something about it. And I think the best thing I can do is rush for a smithy and I will try to put a smithy somewhere good I actually am unsure where is good with the exception of Epicrotia I think that there are quite a few good places of course but they are kind of hard to find oh Thor good Thor good you got murdered sir I can't believe that Batanian volunteer was so uh, so dangerous to me right there very very interesting okay oh he only had a very small amount of HP left okay that's good to know for me very nice. <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Here we go. Okay. That's nice. No one spawning. Okay. Yeah. They spawn pretty close. That's the main issue here. You know, they spawn relatively fast and near to where you initially spawn in. So you got to look left and right very fast. Otherwise, they're going to very easily ambush you from some random direction that you can't see in. And it's going to be a big, big problem. Anyway, there you go. We did achieve a victory there as well. And I have a bow in the final round. Did I really just hit... Did I hit my own guy or did I hit the enemy? Oh! <laughs> Take that, sir. Take that. That was a nice headshot if ever I saw one. Is it just me or am I much better with bows when I'm not actually using them ever? I don't know. It just seems super weird. However, any time, basically any time I'm in a tournament and I have a crossbow or a bow, I somehow do really well with it. But if I have a bow in like a regular battle situation, just count me out. I might as well just miss the, the first 20 or so attacks and then I will start hitting things potentially, you know? It's, it's kind of crazy. Oh no. Ooh, nice. Okay, Whew. that was a bit worrying for me. That was a bit worrying. I really thought to myself I was done there because a Batanian Fian is really good. They're really good at what they do. And I, uh, we actually gained a broadsword from that, which I think is a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent weapon. Yeah, um, it's decent, but not not any good, basically. Um, yeah. That's not really going to happen. So we're just going to upgrade Thorgood right here. He's going to wear some uh, better stuff. And we now have 7,200, which I think is pretty decent. And I think that should be enough for us to now make our way over to... Oh, I could attack the caravan here. Do I want to attack the caravan? I mean, that's the thing. Caravans are usually relatively quick because they have a lot of cavalry. So it's going to be kind of diff difficult to catch up to them and, um, you know, track them down and things like that. So we're just going to instead do this. We're going to do 2% more party speed at night. We are going to gain 10 more influence by winning tournaments. That actually might be really, really useful. 30% um, chance to negate relationship penalty from kingdom decisions. That's actually really powerful as well. But the relationship penalty is not that significant. Um, if you have a huge amount of influence, 
then you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. I actually think I might take champion because I, I'm probably going to be doing a bunch more tournaments and the relation decrease, as I've said, is not that good. So it doesn't really affect us too much. All right, so I'm going to be speaking more into medicine, more into leadership, more into intelligence. And there we go. All right, that seems pretty good to me. There's actually another tournament going here at Maranath, but I won't be doing that because what I'd like to do, ideally, is um, I would like, if at all possible, to go over to Northern Empire territory, maybe do a battle or so with one of the vassals there. Um, not sure if that's going to really work out. Uh, 558. Yeah, 558 per day, by the way. That's very significant. So it might very well be the case that I literally just need to spam some tournaments, just need to do some battles against looters and things like that, gain some weapons, smelt them down, sell them in places that are actually good to sell them in, and uh, just get my economy up and running before we actually do anything else. I, that's the thing. I did not think about the economy Everyone. before getting my stronghold, which was the main issue here. But it's all right. It's all right. We're doing okay. We still have a working army. It is not too bad. And, uh, well, it does add a little bit, little bit of drama to the series as well, because obviously, you know, if I'm playing perfectly every single second, then it might get a bit boring, right? It might get a bit boring, maybe. Well, it depends. It depends on your, your uh, thought process and your and your perspective, I suppose. But otherwise, ooh, that was some damage. We, oh, that was piercing damage, actually. I uh, wonder who did that. I, I think someone ha here has like a pole arm or something. Ooh, nice damage to the head right there. Didn't take him out, though. Didn't take him out. Nice. Okay, can I get some more? Yeah. Okay, some good damage here and there. Kind of miss not having a ranged weapon. Hmm. I was thinking of going for crossbows just literally because this is a Vlandian character and crossbows generally are Vlandia and the Empire. But I've, I've tried crossbows in the past and they haven't been that good for me, hilariously enough. Even though I personally feel like they're really fun to use, I think in a normal situation they're maybe a bit too slow to make any kind of lasting impact, which is the main problem. Anyway, there you go. They ran away. We're going to get some good loot for that, I think. We should at least get some good loot. Yeah, nice. Good amount of stuff right there. And technically what I could do is I could raid this village. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I should. Mm, I'm, I don't know. Here's the thing. On the one hand, it might very well give me a really good bonus in terms of how much iron ore it's going to give me. So I can sell it at um, uh, maybe Maranath. Maranath is a pretty good place to go to sell iron ore because it has, uh, it should have a smithy there and they'll probably pay quite a high wage for it. But I'm not entirely sure mm, in that case. Uh, now, these, these things are basically pointless for me. I don't really care either way. Security or loyalty doesn't really matter in my opinion. So I guess I'll just go for security. And that is that. Mm, should I go for this? All right, so I did decide to go in for the raid, and we're going to see how we do. Now, bear in mind that I do have a, a lot of uh, I do have a lot of crossbowmen, so I'm thinking what I would do is I will place my infantry on the one side of the river, and then I'll place my crossbowmen on the other side, and we'll just uh, make them go a little bit more loose in their formation here, so that we can potentially. Oh, they're actually moving pretty fast. Ooh, this might be problematic. Yeah, this might be pretty bad, so it might very well be that we're going to be beset upon way too fast, and it might be that I just need to charge my infantry in, which I am actually going to do right now. Oh, nice damage. Nice initial damage right there. And we should we, we should do all right. I mean, these guys are literally just militia, I think, for the most part. And I am distracting them. Basically, all that my purpose is right now is to literally just distract the archers so that my crossbowmen can attack them. That is pretty much it. Uh, because my uh, my offensive capability, especially when they're focusing me, is limited because I do not want to get pincushioned to death by a huge amount. Oh, there we go. Nice. Yes. Hello, Mertion the Lion. Very good indeed. Another champion has risen in the ranks. 
Very nice indeed. I like it. All right, so we're going to see who that is in just a second. Whoa, that guy seems pretty harsh. Nice. I'm liking it. Okay. Now, um, I think there might be a little bit of an exploit in regards to the Distinguished Service um, uh, mod, right? Because what you can do is you can go to the inventory... And you can go to the guy and you can basically be like, okay, I will just take all of your stuff and I will sell it, if you know what I mean. So basically, I could take these gloves for 633 gold and I could sell them. And I'm not going to do that, obviously. I'm just going to do this so that he can equip a, a new, uh, new horse and everything. And, uh, you know... But that's what I'm talking about. Basically, Distinguished Service, if you can get a whole bunch of people that are actually relatively high tier, like this guy is, because obviously he is a uh, Vlandian sergeant, so he's he's pretty powerful, you know? He's pretty powerful. He's got some good gear and everything, and he's going to be able to... Um, oh, I actually took the wrong... Oh, I took the wrong skill. Oh, well, that's actually not too bad. I guess we'll just get more, more cash. So I think that's fine. But otherwise... Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty nice in my opinion, and uh, hopefully it will work out quite well. Now, I think I did tick the auto allocation for traits and stuff like that, and someone said to me that they're also using the Distinguished Service mod, and basically it takes a day or so for all of the traits to be assigned. So I'm actually just going to leave him for the moment, and we'll see what happens with it. Hopefully we're going to be getting some decent amounts of money here. I mean, technically it's iron ore, but we can turn it into money relatively soon, hopefully. And we do have another castle to be decided about. Okay, so they can technically give it to me, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm just going to support Hecard here. If I support Hecard, I'm going to lose a little bit of relation with Dirthart, which I really don't care about. But what I do want to do is try to increase my overall influence in the overall faction being able to do that is going to make so much difference especially when we can potentially usurp the throne that's going to be so so powerful usurping the throne is going to be something we definitely want to do all right hello there seems to be an enemy here so i will try to run away he's going to be way too difficult for me to deal with of course And he got us. He did get us. Okay, so wait a minute. Is this guy... No, Mantios is the leader. Right. Okay, well, let's have a look. How much is it going to cost me? Everything I have. Of course, of course. What about all my items? And all my money? Nope. That's not going to work. So instead, I'm just going to leave a couple of troops behind. We did gain some tactics from that as well. That's also the main reason why I actually thought uh, that leveling tactics would be a pretty cool thing to do. Now, I'm hopeful that, yeah, we still have our, we still have our majority of sharpshooters, which is fantastic. And we also have our companions still here, which is all that matters, really. So hopefully we'll be able to get past and back into Vlandian territory, back into Batanian territory as well. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.